As a Christian, I would say I saw the original Hellraiser too early. Yeah, too young. I'd say too young. Sorry, Mom. But it was also one of the movies that got me into horror and made me really love the genre. So this had pretty big shoes to fill for me. I saw the original trailer for this a couple of months ago and I thought, yeah, that looks like another Hellraiser sequel I'm probably going to avoid because <laughs> that's what I've done for everything after two because I hear they're kind of terrible and I don't really need to watch a bad Hellraiser movie. Then after the reviews from Fantastic Fest came out, I kind of knew I had to see it because I really do love that first one and Prey did this weird thing where they just dropped a random horror sequel and it was fantastic. So I thought, you know what? Honestly, what are the chances? I feel like this is gonna be really bad because it's a streaming original. Like, look at Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Honestly, it set my bar pretty low. So I went into this going, eh, it'll probably be good. The first act, I would say, is pretty solid. It's not fantastic, but it's pretty solid. The writing isn't really a strength of this movie, and that's pretty clear in the first act before the Cenobites really start digging in and doing what they do. Really, all you have to grab onto is the characters, and without the performances, I, I think the writing the script probably wouldn't hold your attention. Thankfully, you do have some pretty charismatic leads and some really interesting characters at the forefront, so it carries you through long enough, and then carnage starts to happen. And I'll be honest, at first, even that, like this movie was a slow build for me. Not that things don't happen, but my interest in the movie started pretty low. It was pretty much like, yeah, I, I hope it's all right. And then the further we got into the movie, it just grew. It just got better and better and better. I, I kind of, for the first bit of the movie, was like, eh, this seems like it's more of a leaning PG-13. And then I just, I just don't know if that's... And then Pinhead shows up and puts a needle through some lady's throat and you get an internal shot of that. So, just the gore alone of this movie is genuinely spectacular. And that was a standout point of the original, so I'm really glad that I am able to say that. The core of the Hellraiser movie for me is the Cenobites. That's what makes it interesting. That's why I care, is seeing their cool designs, all the creative ways they kill people, all the interesting torture devices they have. That's what makes these movies super interesting to me and more fun and more unique and original than anything else. While there's a couple of Cenobites that kind of miss the mark for me in terms of design, this movie absolutely makes up for those few with all of the rest of them. Most of the designs of these things are absolutely incredible. They feel modern and updated without looking dumb or cheesy. I don't quite know how they managed to make them scarier as the film went on. I think it took me a second to adjust to the new pinhead, but it wasn't a long second. And once I did, she's terrifying. Like, maybe rival the original terrifying for me. Also, uh, just a, <laughs> friend of friend, just a quick side note uh, in terms of the design of the new pinhead. Please don't do that thing that the internet does where you make all the weird, uncomfortable fan art and make me question whether saying that I'm a fan of the new movie makes people think, oh, you're one of those fans or not one of those fans. Just don't do it. Back to the movie. I love the way that the movie shows the people who have been marked the way that the world shifts around like the puzzle cube. It looked a little similar to me, not in a bad way, but just in a like, I think I know this sort of feeling kind of way. Makes sense. It's the director of Nighthouse, which if you haven't seen Nighthouse, go see Nighthouse. It's got some really trippy visual stuff that I think is the perfect direction to go with Hellraiser. On that note, I actually hope they make more Hellraiser movies. I think that's a statement to how good this movie truly is and how much it feels a lot like the original Hellraiser, but like its own thing too. Like I wanna see more in this version of Hellraiser. I like that there's twists and turns. I like that they call back to the visual motifs of the original without making it feel like a, <laughs> you, you know the original? You guys remember that? We don't have anything to add to that, so please love the original enough to go see this. This feels like something new and worth seeing on its own, that pays respects and homage to the original, which is exactly what it should be. My only major negative, and this comes back to the writing, is I guess spoilers from here on out. There's a scene that absolutely doesn't need to be in this movie. 
One of the main twists is that Trevor, the love interest of our main character in the movie, has actually been working with a guy who wants to feed them to the Cenobites, which is a really great twist on paper. But the way they present it is just awkward. So our guy Trevor gets bit by Chatterer, who, by the way, gets so much play in this movie. Incredible. He's just laying on the couch, bleeding out as you do, and a wind-up Jeffrey Bezos just sort of shuffles into frame and just says, like, I know that you're working with me, but what are you doing? It's one of the most awkward scenes I have ever seen, and I couldn't help but think, well, they must be revealing that in such a weird way because there's going to be some sort of double twist or a bigger twist on top of that twist or something's going to happen that's going to make it important to tell us that earlier rather than later. Literally two scenes later, our main character finds out in a scene that you wouldn't even have to cut differently or reshoot anything. If you just cut out the first reveal scene and then played the rest of the movie, it would be a way more interesting and shocking reveal that he was actually bad the whole time, where now it just feels like, yeah, we know, like, like we know. The audience shouldn't be waiting for the main characters to catch up, especially not on a movie like this that's pretty bare bones in terms of what it is. Which is a shame because the rest of the movie is so deeply intrinsically show don't tell. The way that the Cenobites lore is shown at all is brilliant. Like I feel like the movie didn't tell me anything and it just displayed it and we got to pick up on little clues and it was really cool learning about the Cenobites and what they are and how they work in this world and this movie. I think it's great. So to have that in the same movie is one of the most awkward twist reveals I've ever seen. It's just kind of a shame. But once you get past that, and I did pretty quickly, once you get past that, the rest of the movie is just incredible. You get little callbacks to the skinless dude from the original. You get cool scenes with the Cenobites chasing people. You get to see them a little better and a little more kind of do their own thing separate from Pinhead, which is really fun. I'd love to see more of that, which is really true to the Hellraiser franchise. I feel like every movie that I've seen, which to be fair is three out of 106, but all of them have one thing that's just absolutely batshit crazy out of nowhere. I think the second one introduced the Leviathan, which is really cool, but absolutely insane. The first one's got the whole separate dimension. For this one, we get to see the villain ascend. He kind of gets what he wants, right? To survive, to live, and to have power, but then it turns him into a Cenobite. The choice to have the last shot of this movie him just being ripped to shreds turned into a Cenobite in this weird ethereal dimension. It's pretty rad. So yeah, if you're looking for something to watch on a Friday night this October, Hellraiser's definitely a really good option. Thank you for checking out this video and my channel. Uh, if you liked it, hit the like, hit the subscribe, comment down below what movie you'd like me to review next. Or don't. Uh, I'm really not your dad.